Okay, and then also, um, you guys are not able to speak. I cannot hear you, but if any questions come up during the session, feel free to type it into the chat box. I will or stop and answer uh, right away, or I will go ahead and um, answer it at the end of this session. Um, again, welcome to Volleyball Recruiting 101 Strategies for Underclassmen. My coach, Lana. Um, so let's, let me go ahead and um, just really quickly start with introducing myself so you guys know a little bit of where I come from and what I have done in my volleyball career, and then we'll go on and talk about the agenda and all this fun stuff in a, um, that you guys need to learn. But originally, I'm from Serbia. I did play Division One volleyball at Long Island University in Brooklyn, New York. Um, and uh, while playing at LIU, we won a conference all four years in a row, so we did play NCAA Division One tournaments all four years. Um, if you guys are following NCAA Division One, the tournament is actually happening right now, um, and I would definitely suggest um, that you guys take some time and watch the the best teams in the country. Really, um, by watching, you're also learning, um, improving your your volleyball skills. So. I played the uh, Division I NCAA Division I championship for four years. Um, I was first team all conference all four years. My sophomore year, I was conference player of the year, and my senior year, I was conference player of the year. And um, I, after I graduated and after I finished playing at LIU, I did coach there. I got an opportunity to stay in coach, so I was the assistant coach for three years. Um, I have many experience at high school level, uh, at indoor club, and youth beach volleyball as well. Uh, up in New York, where I went to school, and now in Florida, where I currently live. I also played beach volleyball for Serbia national team for a couple of years. So that's a little bit about me. And as far as agenda, the things that we'll be covering today. Um, so we'll talk about research in schools. There's a lot of opportunities out there. There's a lot of schools out there that offer volleyball. So how do you know and where do you find all the different schools? So we'll talk about how to do research. Uh, we'll talk about creating your own target list of schools and completing your NCSA profile. Then we'll cover how to email coaches, and then we'll talk a little bit about contact rules and recurring timeline, just so you guys are aware of um, if coaches can contact you, which divisions can contact you and uh, are not allowed to contact you, and also understand better when these different divisions are recruiting um, underclassmen. Right, so, um, researching schools. Um, so, like I mentioned, there is a lot of opportunities out there, a lot of schools that offer uh, volleyball. Uh, so, where do I look? Um, well, definitely, you know, um, find colleges. Tab at your NCSA profile will help you with that. Um, so, you'll go ahead and click on Find Colleges tab. You'll be able to see um, the map. You can select. Um, my suggestion would be with many years of experience you know, as a player, um, coach Division One, recruiting young athletes like you guys while I coach at Division One. Right now, I'm coaching a club, uh, working with NCSA as well. So I am, um, you know, helping my club players go through the same process as you guys are. I'm helping um, many of our NCSA clients. So from my own experience, I would suggest you. Learn first. You learn as much as you can. Learn as much as, as you can. As what are, what levels are out there? What the levels are out there? I know that a lot of people are not familiar with NAIA, and they think there is only the NCAA Division One, Two, and Three. Um, and NAIA could be actually a great fit for some um, for some players out there. So learn as much as you can about different opportunities out there, different divisions, what these different divisions have to offer as far as athletics academics, as far as scholarship opportunities, academic athletic scholarship. So don't um, at the moment or right away start narrowing your choices down until you know and learn what um, the options are out there for you. So find colleges tab will help you with that. Uh, you'll be able to see the map. You can select uh, uh, all the states or a certain state. Um, and then you'll also be able to select a different division, um, you know, something in between that you're interested in, major, and then once you click search on the bottom, um, you will be able, you'll get a list of all these different schools. So 
So as much as you can, what opportunities that are there before you uh, make any other decisions. So how to create your own target list. So now when you guys uh, are familiar with different divisions, opportunities, academic, athletic opportunities out there, uh, you need to think about what are some factors that, uh, that you are personally looking for in college, okay? And we'll talk, we'll talk about what are the some important factors, but when you're creating your own target list, you want to start and focus with the colleges in your state surrounding states, and then after that you want to expand your target list. You should have about, you know, 20 to 30 schools uh, to begin with. Uh, list. So factors, some factors that are important to you that you should think about. Distance from home, you know, do you want to stay in, in state? Do you want to stay closer to your friends and your family? Or are you open to go anywhere in the country? Okay. Um, lo location, you know, do you want to, um, Oh, do you want to be in a big city? Do you want to be in a smaller um, on a smaller campus with a big city around it, like it was in my my choice? Or do you want to be in a you know get a real college experience with a big you know twenty plus thousand students campus? Um, do you want to be in the area where it is nice and warm all year round, or are you okay you know going somewhere up in the northeast or midwest where it's a Colder. So these are all the things that, as far as location, um, you should consider. Level of competition. Okay. What? What? Uh, what do you think? What is a good fit for you? Do you want to uh, try to play on the highest level possible? And I understand, you know, everyone would like to play at Division One level. Um, that's everyone's goals, which is perfectly fine. But you want to think about what is what is the level of competition that you personally want to play. Not what, you know, your friends play or, you know, what um, what your parents or your cousins would want you to do. You want to think what would be a good fit for you as far as the level of competition. How much playing time do you want to get? That's a big thing. I mean, if you are playing, if you've been playing throughout your um, club uh, career and you you started as a freshman on varsity team um, uh, in your high school and you're doing well as a sophomore as well. You're playing all the time. You're not leaving the court. Would you be willing to sit maybe possibly first two years of co in college? Is that something you would like? That's very important. That's one of you know, on the side of major and possibly scholarship opportunities. That's something that you you should think about. Uh, or you, do you want to play? The whole time, do you want to be impact player, you know, as a freshman? Another thing that you want to think about is coach. You will take visits. You unofficial, you'll take official visits. You will, you will um, be able to meet with coaches. You want to think about what is the coaching style that you like that fits you well. Um, you know, do you like the coach that is going to challenge you the whole time? Um, on the court, off the court, you know, do you like the coach who um, only uh, would challenge you on the court and then not really care what you do in the classroom? Or do you want a coach that would care about that as well? Um, that's, that's a big thing because this coach could be poss could possibly be your coach in in the next four years in college. So that's something definitely to so, um Team record, is it important to you? Do you be on a team? Um, you know, maybe a lower lower level, but the team that is winning the conference all the time, or you want to play be on a play on a very high level, and the team that is, you know, uh, a losing season. Uh, sure, um, I think for everyone this is going to be a big, very important factor. Um, you know, what does this school offer? Exact major that you want? Does this school offer an alternative, alternative major that? Um, could possibly, you know, if you want to do medical school in the future, um, you know, if, if you would be okay with doing a bio underclassman or undergrad, um, or do you want to try to get into the school that offers pre um, So, So major will be a very important factor. Uh, overall academics, scholarship opportunities. Um, you know, what does... Uh, does this school um, does the school have to offer a full scholarship? Do they offer 
um, full athletic scholarship? Do they offer stack scholarship, meaning the combo scholarship for academic and athletics? Do they just um, offer academic scholarships? So that's definitely something to consider. Well, the big thing that I want that I would like to suggest to you is search or research schools at all levels. The best that you can think about when making your own target list, you wanna uh, put two different columns, and so one column will be your reach school. Okay, so is your coach tenure right now that you are, um, you know, a high level Division two player? Okay. So if you're a high-level Division II player, your uh, Division II schools will be your match. Okay. Division II schools will be your match schools. Your reach schools will be low-level Division One. And then safety schools will be low-level Division II, the NNA schools. So you have something to focus on, because the majority of the time, you know, we're just focusing on our reach schools, reach schools, you know. We want to try to best on, a, on a, the play on the highest level possible, and that is perfectly fine, but then we forget about, to, about our match schools, you know. So Division two are my match schools, high-level Division two schools. Um, and also safety schools. Your safety schools are the schools that you know that you will be able to, to get you know, if your safety school is a uh, Division, three, Division three school, you know that based on your academics, based on your GPA classes that you've been taking and your um, uh, scores, you know you'll be able to be admitted into that school. And of course, if you're high level athletically, Division two, the Division three schools athletically are safety schools for you. So make a, make a list of, you know, 20 to 30 schools and go with, you know, five, seven reach schools match schools and then the rest will be safety schools and your pr primary pr uh, primary goal should be to to get the, as, as many as you can match schools to um, to you know give you an offer and then your reach schools if you should keep following up with them letting them know updating them on your recruiting process but it shouldn't be your primary goal um, in schools and then your safety schools will be there for you And after you research schools, after you create your own target list, the next step you want to do is complete or your NCSA profile. So if you, at the moment, you don't have the video up on your NCSA profile, you want to add a video. If you do have a video up on your NCSA profile that you posted eight months ago, nine months ago, you want to make sure you add a new video. If the high school season, a uh, video is not available, it is okay to add a skill video. And most of the information, you want to make sure that your profile is up to date. And the reason why is, and we'll talk about this in a minute, you are going to start emailing coaches after this. So once you email this, start emailing these coaches, they want to see that your profile is up to date. Because if, if your profile is not up to date, what is that going to tell them? You're not looking to get recruited anymore. Maybe you're not on top of your game. Um, you know, one big thing that college coaches are always saying, uh, they're always um, about it is, uh, is, is she or he lazy? Uh, you want to make sure that your profile is up to date. Date. Everybody now should have should have a um, new club tryout or club tryout. So add a new club information. If you already know what uh, uh, team you made it, add that. Add club schedule. Okay. Your club schedule um, and new athletic accomplishments. So, if as a freshman you were a first team all conference on varsity team, that's up on your profile. If you, uh, the freshman, were uh, MVP of the of the team, that would be up on your profile. Same thing with your academic information. Uh, if you were if you are all on a roll um, as sophomore, add. It. Then, you know, and I get this question all the time, well, with Shana, I don't want to, sh uh, you know, um, show off. And you're not showing off. You're bragging about yourself. You're just animation that you, you and listing your awards that you worked 
we're hard for. So any honor roll, if you've taken any honors, any AP classes as, as freshman and sophomore, add that. So GPA improved from the year before, add that. Uh, all the academic information should be up on your profile. Your club coach information. So maybe this year you don't have the same um, club coach as you did last year. Important is to have your updated uh, club coach information because if these college coaches want to reach out to you, they go through your club coach. And we'll talk about the contact rules in a little bit. So new club coach information, and all we need to need you to add to your NCSA profile is your club, uh, um, your club coach name, your his or her email, and then cell phone number. And if you uh, play any additional sports, so if you, in the summer you play each volleyball, Go ahead and add, add that. If you play basketball for high school, go ahead and add that. If you've done, if you're doing a personal training workout, strength training workout, uh, add all of that. Okay, perfect. Let me go ahead. I do have a couple of questions here um, that I that is something talked about right now, so I would like to to answer that. What do you mean by skill video? That's a great question. Really great question. Um, so the skill video. Um, it's not a game footage, okay? So we talked about the high school video. Um, high school video will be the game footage, and then the skill video will be something if you can talk to your club coach or club director to record the skill video. And all it's going to be is really um, having a club coach or somebody toss the ball to you. If you're an outside hitter, you're going to go about 20 hits from the outside. Then you're going to do some hitting from the... the um, from addition, then maybe you're going to go some pass to to, uh, to hit, um, and then some serving serving at the end. So it's, a skill video is a non-game footage video. How in a combo athletic and academic scholarship? Another great question. So um, as far as scholarships opportunities out there, so Division One school, and, and this is something um, I will be holding another class uh, at the end of January that it will be the extension of this class. So we'll talk into more details as far as, um, as, far as um, the scholarship opportunities out there. But the majority of the stack or combo scholarships come at Division II and NAIA level. It's, it's a combo scholarship, meaning, you know, um, half athletic, half academic, or, you know, 50 plan athletic and, and something rest, um, 30% athletic, uh, but it's it's so pretty much a Division two and an AIA level is where they do all these uh, stack or combo scholarships. Uh, college recruits, when college recruits, do they look at the academics as much as the rest of it? Yes. Let me read that question one more time because this is a great question, Soleil. Uh, when colleges recruit, do they look at the academics as much as the rest of it? Yes. Yes, 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 big time. You know, your athletics is important, of course, but um, these college coaches like um, is important because you need to be able to get into the school, get accepted into the school. Uh, academics is important because if you're looking to play Division One and Division Two, you need to be eligible by NCAA to be able to play. And if you're not eligible by NCAA, there is no school that will want your full scholarship uh, without being eligible, okay? And so, yes, academics is very, very important. Um, these college coaches like athletes that know how to manage their time uh, by, by um, you know, having a great, good grade and taking um, you know, some um, advanced classes, possibly honors or AP, or even if you're taking regular classes and your GPA is 4.0, that's great. But definitely academics are very, very important, especially when we talk maybe about Division three level. At the degree level, it's all about academics um, because, um, you know, college coach at Division three level will come to you and tell you, I'm a great player, I really like your energy, I like your hard work, I love your personality, but you need to be able to get into the school first. You need to do everything on your own to be accepted into uh, Division three school and that way you have a, a spot on our roster. If that happens, you have a spot on, on our roster. So yes, academics is very, um, very important. As far as if academic accomplishments have to be from high school only, no, you can go ahead and add from middle school. Um, 
uh, Bailey, if that's the, what you meant. It's perfectly fine if you if you go ahead and um, and add that you were in a middle school all honors role um, as much as you can. Um, so when these college coaches just check your profile out, they'll see your video. So you sure that your video is up to date. They're gonna be they want they will see your athletic and academic information. So how many years you've been playing high school? How many years you've been playing club? You want to make sure that the information are up to date. Um, your contact information, okay, so if you don't have your cell phone number up there, it's only your parents, you be, do want to add your cell phone number as well. Um, so go ahead and add that, update the, and e e your email as well, and then uh, your GPA transcripts, if you add them, they'll be able to see that, and they're going to be able to see your GPA and your uh, the type of classes that you've been taking. All right, awesome. If any questions come about the, come up about this, I'll I'll cover them in a little bit. All right. So now, when we talked about research in schools, we talked about um, creating a target list. So you have your target list with your reach, match, and safety schools. You completed your NC and safety profile. Now it's time to talk about contacting coaches. Okay. So why is emailing important? We're going into a very heavy recruiting period. Once the January hits and once the club season starts, once the tournament start of the club season, all the way up till end of June is very, very, very heavy recruiting period. You're going to see many coaches out there at the tournament, um, you know, taking notes, looking at different athletes. And so if you don't email coach, they will probably not come around your court. There's so many athletes out there that that uh, they they want to play at the college level, and they're emailing coaches, they're reaching out to coaches, and this is why um, you know these coaches are are on their their course. course. So emailing is very important going into this class season. You make sure you put your name out there. You want to make sure that you go ahead and and um, you know, send that introductory email, tell coach a little bit about yourself. You want to make sure you send that club schedule, attach the club schedule um, to, to the email as well. So the only way pretty much, I'm going to be honest, unless you're, you know, 6'4", 6'5", or University of Florida has a 6'8", volleyball player, well, they probably didn't have to do too much emailing. They did some emailing, of course, but didn't have to do too much emailing because, you know, she's six four six five standout player that everyone, that all the coaches or all uh, out there are fighting for. Everyone else will have to uh, email. And again, these college coaches do like to hear from student athletes. They do like to have student athletes reach out. Again, because there's a big number of student athletes, all about players they want to play at a college level. Um, and so, these just get many, many uh, hundreds of emails um, every day, and so you want to make sure that your email is right there, standing up. Okay. When is a good start to a e uh, good time to start emailing coaches? It's always a good a good time to email uh, start to email coaches. You know, even if you if it's September and these college coaches are in their own season, and we all know that college coaches don't do much recruiting when they're in their own season. And it's a slow recruiting period. It is a slow recruiting period for college coaches, but it's not a slow recruiting period for you as a player. And so always should um, uh, coach. For you as an underclassman, um, fill out recruiting questionnaires is very important as well. And here's the reason why. I always tell my clients, fill a recruiting questionnaire, send an email, to introductory email to the coach. Recruiting questionnaires, um, stay in their system. So if you email coach right now and you're a freshman and they don't start recruiting freshmen until, um, you know, uh, uh, two years later, the email might get lost, overlooked, but recruit questionnaire stays in the system. So when this coach goes two, two uh, uh, years later and goes through the list of the 2021 recruits, the email will be out there. They'll make sure that they uh, reach out to you and they see where the whole recruiting process. All right, let me see. I do have two questions here. Do most colleges even look at your profile as a freshman or want to hear from you as a freshman? Yes. Yes. Great question, Jordan. Um, yes, they do. Uh, if you want to start putting your name out there, 
as early as possible. You do not want to wait until you have your NCSA profile and then you wait until your senior year to start reaching out to coaches. And you're wondering why I'm not hearing from these coaches. The earlier you start putting your name out there, the better. Uh, what is a good start to good to start calling coaches? That's a great question, Stephanie. Um, so, who as an underclassman, okay? If you're a freshman, it is not really necessary to make phone calls. Filling out recruiting questions is important, very important. Emailing coaches, slow putting your name out there is important. If you're um, if you're a sophomore right, and you want to start making some phone calls, that is okay. Just don't do it during a college coach season. Okay, so let's say you email coach um, out before the the club season. The, once the tournament starts, you see the coach. Um, around your court, you send a follow-up email, and you try to schedule through your club coach. You start um, to you start to schedule um, a phone call. Just don't call in the season because they are very very busy. Questionnaire: How do we fill them out? Uh, great question. So um, you will find if you go to find colleges tab. And if you search for a certain school, once you click on that school, you'll be able to find some, um, you'll find recruiting questionnaires right there. Recruiting questionnaire is pretty simple. It's, um, it will ask you for all the information, your name, your personal information. It will ask you for your um, grad year, position, uh, ask you about your high school. They'll ask you, they're all different, but in general, you know, they'll ask you about your high school, they'll ask you about club, they'll ask you, your height, your approach jump, your block jump, if you have that available. Some of these schools might even ask you, what are your top five schools? Okay, some coaches know, like to know what you're thinking and, and what schools you what are other schools you're looking at. No matter what, if that question comes up, what are your top five schools, the school that you're filling out recruiting questionnaire for should be your top school. If, there, if the recruiting questionnaire is not up on your it's not up um, on the SA profile through and colleges tab. You'll be able to go to every school has a recruiting questionnaire up on their athletic website. So you go to their athletic website directly and fill out the recruiting questionnaire. Another question of, I had another two questions about recruiting questionnaires. So yeah, find colleges or if it's not um, there, you can go up to directly to the um, athletic website. Uh, Soleil, if you can uh, question, can you call as a junior? You definitely can call as a junior. Yes. Um, as a as an underclassman, unless you're looking to be recruited by the top Division One schools, you don't necessarily need to uh, make uh, the calls. You know, once again, you, you're looking to get recruited by mid to to level Division One schools. I'm talking a little bit about re, uh, reading timeline, so it will make a lot more sense. To, so now when we talk, why is email important, when is the good start, a time to start emailing, and how to fill out your recruiting questionnaires, we'll talk a little bit about introductory and follow-up email. So um, introductory email should be short, sweet, and point. You have an opportunity or you will have a chance to tell a coach more about yourself you know that there is an opportunity at that school. An opportunity equals that they are recruiting your position at your grad year. Uh, the, the, the introductory email, really, it's, it's about three paragraphs in the first paragraph. And if you, um, we have a class uh, called Coach Communications 101, emailing coaches the right way. So if you want to learn more about emailing coaches and go into a lot more details or what introductory email should look like, I would definitely suggest you, you sign up for that class. Introductory email really quickly. It's a three paragraph. Per, first paragraph, you tell the coach the most important information. So name, grad year, club, what position you play, and why you're emailing them today. The second paragraph is a paragraph there. It's personalized. So you're telling the coach, hey, coach, I've been playing club for this many years. I've been playing, uh, um, you know, this is my first or second year of playing high school. Um, these are my strengths as a player. And the last paragraph, um, you know, you want to make sure that you include your club coach information, club email, and 
and cell phone number, and you want to make sure you tell the coach that you'll keep updating them um, throughout your recruiting process. And if you guys want to learn more about introductory email, how to write it, and everything in details to include, uh, you want to sign up for emailing coaches the right way. So after you send the coach introductory email, okay, so introductory email you send to the schools that um, you're emailing them for the first time. So if you start emailing coaches right now, you want to send them an introductory email with your club schedule. And then in about two months, you follow up with them. You follow up with these coaches, and follow up could be athletic, volleyball related, or it could be academic related. Meaning, like I said here, continue to email coaches with an update on your progress both in a classroom and on the court. Then and this class, the end of the year that I'll be hosting, will be going into a lot more details right now uh, about that because your main focus really should be from now there to send the introductory email with the uh, club schedule attached. Um, a question here, what if you do not have clubs near you, would you put your head coach information? Um, so. I understand that some players out there are not playing club. They only play high school level. Um, if you only play high school level, um, that's okay. Uh, you will need to put your high school information. All right. Awesome. And so now when we talked about emailing coaches, um, you guys understand that better, why it's important, and and um, how to, to follow up. We're going to talk about contact rules. So, you probably had situations, if some of you started emailing, um, you probably had situations and wonder, well, I emailed this coach, and I followed up with this coach, and I haven't heard anything. That they're not interested in me? Is this really working? Should I keep updating them, or should I wait for them to email me back? Here is the answer. You should keep emailing coaches, and keep following up with them, because if it's Division One school, Division Two, and NAIA schools, because uh, the, their contact rules, they're not allowed to email you, text you, or call call you directly. So remember, I, I said include your club coach information. The only way they can contact you is through your club coach. So every time you send an email, you want to include your club coach information. So let's say there's Division One school or Division Two school that interested interested in, in you. And they want to, uh, they want to let you know that that they're interested. So they'll reach out to your club coach and they'll say, "Hey, I'm very interested in, in Lana. Um, you know, uh, we are um, definitely we'll definitely following her in the tournaments. We're definitely interested in, in um, you know, or following her progress. Um, let, tell her to keep us posted on her recruiting." And so the club coach will forward that information to you. Or maybe they'll say, hey, tell Lana to, to go ahead and give us a call. But Division One, Division Two, and NAA schools, are, coaches are not allowed to email you, text you, or call you directly. The only way, the way these Division One, Two, and NAA schools are allowed to contact you directly is if they send you an email, hey, here's, here's our recruiting questionnaire. Fill out. And we talked about recruiting questionnaire, and here are our camp summer camp dates. Summer camps. So these are the only two emails that these college coaches at these levels can send you. Here is the recruiting questionnaire, and a lot of coaches will write in the email saying, "Hey, per NCAA rules, we're not allowed to contact you uh, directly. Uh, so here is the recruiting questionnaire. Fill that out." Social visit. Visits are allowed. Okay, so if there's a school that you really like, it's on top of your list, and you want to go and visit the school, you want to go check out the campus. Um, you want to go ahead and and while while checking out the campus and learning more about academics, you want to go ahead and meet with coach. That is perfectly fine, and it is okay if you set up unofficial visits. Uh, through or campus visit through admissions office, it is okay to email coach and let the coach know that you will be on campus at that at that time and you would like to stop by and, and uh, um, say hi. Another way to schedule an unofficial visit is through your club coach. And then at the three level, contact allowed. 
Okay. So all these coaches can contact you, email you, call you, or text you directly. And uh, official visits are allowed as well. If questions come up with our contact rules, feel free to send it to the chat box. So now when you guys know the contact rules, we're going to talk about recruiting timeline. Some very, very important for you. So timeline. Um, no, not all the different schools, uh, or I'm sorry, not all these different levels, division levels will recruit at the same time. And maybe you heard, you know, there's an last year there was an eighth grader that committed to University of Minnesota, eighth grader setter from California that committed to University of Minnesota. And you're wondering, oh my, she's only an eighth grader. How was this Division One school um, able to recruit her? Well, Division One schools in general, yeah. Heavily, will heavily start recruiting season sophomore year plus. Of course, I mean the big standout player. They'll try to lock them in earlier, but um, Division One schools, especially mid to higher level Division One schools, will uh, start recruiting club season sophomore year and so on. You know, you will have some lower level Division One schools that will recruit possibly junior or senior year. Uh, Division Two and NAIA level schools, um, they will start recruiting your club season, the club season of your junior year plus. And then Division three and junior colleges will start recruiting your senior year. So if as a freshman you're interested in going Division three and you're emailing these coaches and you're not hearing from the coach, don't count. It is okay because look at the recruiting timeline here. When do they start recruiting? Okay? So maybe um, you want to start, you definitely want to email. Coaches. You definitely want to email, even as a freshman, no matter what. But maybe you want to start reaching out to some Division II and NAIA schools before you start focusing on uh, Division three schools. I also added a side note here. Um, fall semester, which is August and December, which just passed, is very slow recurring period. Winter and spring semester, January until the end of June, is heavy, heavy recruiting period. Uh, the questions I have. Uh, your coach has opened your email. What should you do next? Okay. So one thing that you don't want to do is as soon as the coach opens the email, you send them a follow-up email and a follow-up email and a follow-up email. You know, if you email a coach and they opened your email, that's okay. Remember, what are the contact rules? They're not allowed to contact you directly. Okay. And so that's why you're not hearing from that coach. What you want to do, you want to give a coach, you know, a month, month and a half, and then a sudden send a follow-up email. And you'll, they'll open your email again. again. Okay. You want to send a follow-up email. So you don't need to, as soon as you hear the coach open your email, you don't need to go ahead and uh, send them a follow-up email thanking them for opening your email. It's okay. Go back to... Go back to, um, you know, recruiting timeline or go back to uh, contact rules and, um, and, shout, and shout if these coaches are allowed or not allowed to contact you directly. But let me see. I had one more question here. Um, can you go over the what AIA is again? Yes, for sure. So NCAA is... One institution, and then NAIA is a separate institution from um, from NCAA. So NCAA, it's Division One, Division Two, Division Three, and Junior Colleges. NAIA is a separate institution. Um, if you if you compare athletically and academically, NAIA is very similar, if not the same, as Division Two. So I suggest to majority of my clients, if you're open to Division Two and you're not sure what NAIA is, learn about it before you just, you know, run off. But Vision, um, NAIA schools also can offer the same amount of athletic scholarship as Division II. So definitely athletically and academically, NAIA very similar to Division II level. If you're a defensive specialist or a libero and you don't play front throw, how should you record your approach jump? Um, don't have to. Don't have to. I mean, approach jump is for uh, 
And this is what college coaches do want to see all the hitters to have uh, their approach jump, uh, the key measurements, approach jump, block jump, um, our profile. So if you're Libero and DS, you don't need to uh, add your approach jump to your NCSA profile. If you have it, awesome, perfect. But if you don't, it is not necessary. Awesome. And then the next thing I want to talk about is the next classes to take. Okay. Um, so the next classes that are very that would be very good for you guys to take is um, Coach Communication 101, emailing coaches the right way. So we talked about a little bit about emailing, but this class will definitely go a lot more into depth. So if you're not sure what to include in introductory email, this is the, the class to take. Um, if you, um, you know, heard about emailing coaches, but you just want to, or you, or you wrote an introductory email and you're not sure if it's right or not, go ahead, check out the class. They also talk, they give you um, a, a template emails as well to, to go through that as well. So definitely help you when it comes to emailing coaches. And then coach communication tool one, building relationships with coaches. Um, so understanding how to email coaches and understanding how to build relationships with these college coaches is very important for you as an underclassman. And then, like I mentioned, uh, coming, coming at the end of January, I will be hosting available recruiting strategies for underclassmen 201. So stay tuned for that. So you, uh, you guys will definitely um, get an email about that. But really, what we're talking about this class, we'll talk a little more about what are the things to follow up with, what are the options or what are good ideas, how to follow up with coaches, what to expect during the tournament, okay? what to expect during the tournament, how to behave, uh, what coaches evaluating during the tournament as well, what are they looking for, um, can or cannot, or can they come and talk to you or your parents or who they can talk to. So we'll focus a lot more um, into the club season. So right now this class main focus was how to prepare for the club season and at the end of January there will be another class coming up that will talk what to expect during the season. All right, let me see what other questions I have here. What the needed approach jump is for Division One medal? Uh, yes. So Division One college coaches, as far as med and again, one thing you guys need to understand: there's different levels at each division. You know, top Division One schools, there's mid level and there's low level Division One schools. Top Division One schools, uh, well, definitely for for middle, they were looking at 10 feet 3 inches plus. Mid level will be looking at 10 feet plus for for middle, and low level Division One will be looking at 9 7 9 8 plus. Uh, is the VPI important for Libero? No, you don't need to put the VPI. Just in general, it's not it's not very important. As a hitter, college coaches will be overall college coaches. What they want to really see is your um, video. I mean, that's the, the the first evaluation. And even if you don't have a video up on your NCSA profile, it's okay to email coaches. But if you invite them to come watch you play, they will want to see the video before they actually put an effort and come watch you play the tournament, especially if they were not planning to come to that tournament. So, so if you don't have a video, a skill video, if you don't have a game footage video, skill video is next thing to go to. And then if you fully cannot even record a skill video, it is okay to email coach, but they will want to see. Um, don't expect them to come in and watch you play the tournament because they will want to evaluate you through the video first. You're up on NCSA as a freshman. Yes, yes, definitely. Like I just mentioned, um, in order to get these college coaches to come watch you play in the tournament, they will want to see the video first to even, um, to even an effort to c come to your court. Uh, ACA VPI, what is that? Uh, so, so I get a lot of questions about this. It's not something that is very the coaches will not ask you for that. To, to be able to get ABCA VPI number, you need to go to a special 
uh, a client or showcase their work measure all of that. What goes into that is a lot of different things. Some of them is, you know, like your, your approach jump, um, your the, the quickness, um, and all the really physical things. But it's not something that's very important. It's not something college coaches will be looking at. The most important thing is the video, uh, what college coaches will be, will ask for. Um, and so the thing that I wanted to um, mention to you guys uh, before I go ahead and, and uh, you know, um, answer any other questions that you have, we do have a, a, a little survey. I would really appreciate if you guys can uh, would be willing to give us a little bit of feedback on how this um, class went. We're always trying to improve um, your experience and always trying to improve our our hosting our recruiting classes. Um, any feedback, I would very appreciate it very much uh, because. Um, especially because I want, uh, I will be hosting the next class. So any feedback, any improvements that we can make, I would like to do. I would love to hear from you guys. Um, I will go ahead and send you the link. Ahead and send you the link uh, in the chat, and I will also send you in the follow-up email. Uh, link with this uh, survey. So any feedback we would appreciate very much from, from you guys. Okay. I'll go ahead and answer all the question, additional questions that you guys have. Uh, but if you need any help after this class or if you have any other questions, feel free to call our NCSA member services. They're available seven days a week for you guys. I include their email. I include their phone number. Um, also, follow, follow NCSA on Facebook. Let me go ahead and answer the rest of the questions. Mel says she wants to wait before putting her stats there. I don't think this is good. Do you agree? Um, it depends, you know, what she's aiming for. You know, if she's um, aiming for Division One and her approach jump and uh, block jump is not something that she's happy with right now, then, um, you know, she can wait and, and um post that later. One thing that college coaches also understand is that you're just a freshman. You're a young girl that is, you know, I mean, you, you, guys, you guys will still develop. You'll still maybe grow an inch or two, or, and you get physically stronger. So these college coaches understand that the older you get, you know, the stronger you will get, and, you know, they will, uh, ho will hope that your um, measurements improve. So uh, if your daughter would like to wait to put, this, put her approach jump and block jump up on her profile, that is um, that is perfectly fine. As far as stats, like high school stats, like how many digs or how many kills you had, it is not necessary. It is not necessary to put that up on your NCSA profile because I'm I'm going back to college coaches do want to see your video and that's what they're gonna base their evaluation on. So you don't need to sit down and take you an hour to add all the kills on all the digs, all the pieces. That's not something they're very, very interested in, in uh, very much because they will just want to watch your video. I decided to showcase what can I expect. Is it like a tryout or is it HP tryouts recommended? Um, so showcase, majority of the showcases or combines are happening uh, right before big qualifiers or right before before some big tournaments. Um, these days, a lot of organizations do their own showcases where they have college coaches uh, come. So what you can expect from a showcase, you can expect a good amount of college coaches, depending on how big the showcase is or not. So the college coaches will be there evaluating. Um, you know, the showcase will be like pretty much like tryouts, club tryouts. So you're going to do some skills. You work with a partner. You want to, um, you know, um, uh, just warm up and work on individual skill based on what position you play. And then you're going to play six on six. So these coaches will be on the sideline evaluating your skill first and then your um, as well. Um, HP tryouts, um, yes, I recommend to all my clients to do all HP tryouts. You know, if you're just trying out, you know, in your region right now, like you will not get a lot of exposure to college, to college coaches through the HP. But if you're, if you get to represent your state, 
you know, if you're in the top 12 uh, players or so in your state for your age group, that's awesome. That's a good thing to put on your resume. Um, but it's not with HP, you're not going to get a lot of exposure. So if you're thinking exposure-wise, um, it's maybe better to go ahead and, and save that money that you would pay for HP to attend the summer camp. Nice for the nice words. Let me see what other question. Would my vertical be the same as my approach jump? No, that's a great question. Your approach jump, so what your approach jump is, so there's special equipment that you can measure your approach jump. If your uh, high school or your club does, uh, if they don't have that available, if the, that special equipment, you can simply um, just approach, put something like a tape on your finger or put a uh, mark your fingers that way. And so your approach jump is actually when you approach, uh, um, if you um, approach, um, reach as high as you can with your right arm or your dominating arm up, that's your approach jump. How high? What are the tips of your fingers? That's your approach jump. Your vertical is actually from the ground, how high can you jump? So it's different things. If you're if you your vertical, I would suggest to convert that into the approach. Do you have any recurring suggestions for an athlete who is moving out of the country? Um, oh yeah, I can do. I mean, I'm an international student. I've done all my recruiting from from back home from Serbia, so I can give you a lot of uh, uh, information on that. But to keep it short, um, so one thing that is different, and I actually do host uh, do host um, another um, class. It's for international student athletes. So. Um, I talk about into details of what what you know international student athletes need to do. But um, to answer your question, Abigail, um, one thing that you will be missing is getting direct uh, exposure to these college coaches. Okay, uh, so what you need to do um, a lot better than possibly you know uh, players here in the states is email. You email coaches, you need to make sure that you are updating your video on a regular basis, and that will definitely help you, putting your name out there that way. So emailing uh, and updating the video probably more often than, than players here in the States, because these college coaches, that's their only way to see your, expo uh, your progression, and, and that will probably happen is that these coaches will ask for full game footage. So if you're recording as living out of the country, if you're recording your matches, I would definitely suggest um, you go ahead and, and um, record full game footage because uh, because they will they cannot come watch you play, and so they will ask for full game footage. Awesome. Any, um, I will be. I'll stick around for another two minutes. If any additional questions come up, um, again, if you have any questions, um, feel for our member services or email them, um, and uh, feel free to give us any feedback on uh, on this class by filling out the survey. Awesome guys, well, great talking to you again. Uh, thank you for this class. Stay tuned for the uh, 201 class that is coming up at the end of January. Uh, work hard, keep working hard, uh, keep emailing coaches, and definitely something that is always very important is um, to go ahead and, and work hard on the court. I'm going to, yes, I'm 
am going to send a recording of this class um, as soon as as soon as um, we finish today. I hope we're all very good night. Bye bye. Thank you again.